Hi everyone, welcome to the Coolie range announcement for January 2024, where I'll detail the new releases due to arrive in the next four months, as well as some early pre-orders for some brand new tool items that have been eagerly awaited since I revealed them last year. Starting with Aviation Archive, I'm excited to confirm that we have two brand new tool products now available for pre-order, as well as the first items to be revealed in our D-Day 80th Anniversary collection. Going through the years chronologically though, we have a new First World War model release to get us underway. This SPAD S13 is now available and features the distinctive livery of Captain Robert Subaran, an American pilot who flew with the Italians towards the end of the war. Moving into the Second World War, we have a new addition to our War Under the Sun era collection, with this Junkers Ju-88 night fighter that operated in Sicily in 1942. As this is a night fighter, it can be cross-collection as well, depending on your collecting habits. On to our D-Day 80th range, and we have three models to announce, starting with one of the most legendary Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9s that survives to this day. ML-407 was piloted by Kiwi ace John Johnny Halton on June 6, 1944, and was confirmed as the first aircraft to score a kill over the Normandy beachhead on that day of days. The aircraft survives today as well as the Grey Spitfire, operated by Ultimate Warbird flights from Sywell Aerodrome. Next, we have the third release of our Bristol Bowfighter tooling, with a Royal Australian Air Force aircraft that operated on anti-shipping patrols over the English Channel on D-Day. 455 Squadron RAAF was based out of Langham in Norfolk, but on June 6, 1944, this aircraft was seconded to RAF Manston, which is, of course, very local to us here at Corgi HQ. And now for a big one that's been much anticipated. I'm pleased to say that pre-orders are now open on our newly tooled Martin B-26 Marauder. This first release of the model represents a B-26B named Dynamite that was piloted by Major David Dewhurst on June 6, 1944 leading the final bombing run over Utah Beach a mere five minutes before troops landed. The only complete B-26 surviving outside of the United States is painted in the colours of dynamite and is preserved at the Utah Beach Museum in Normandy. The museum's help in the development of this new model was absolutely invaluable and it's a superb place to visit in this 80th anniversary year of the Normandy landings. I'm not done with announcing new Aviation Archive tooling pre-orders yet though, as I'm delighted to say that our new 148 scale Panavia Tornado is now also available to pre-order. This is our engineering sample of the model and we've worked very hard to make this not simply a scaled up version of the 172nd scale version that served us so well for so many years. We've refined the legendary wing sweep action and tooled up a sizeable range of weapon stores in this new tooling, with the first release representing a Tornado G01 operated by RAF No. 9 Squadron in the iconic Johnny Walker, still going strong, colours. Moving on to Vanguards, we're opening pre-orders on our long-awaited 4 Capri Mark II tooling with a Gia Automatic and Sabring Red. This new tooling fills a huge, literal hole in the Vanguards range. How could we go for so long without a Mark II Capri when we already had the Mark I and the Mark III? You can expect this one to arrive later this year and I can't wait to make this famous Ford family hole in the range at long last. Moving on, we have some new Ford Escort releases coming very soon indeed. Firstly, this Ford Escort Mark I twin cam in ermine white, which is operated by Ford as one of the first press cars for this model. Next up, we have two new releases from our hugely popular Escort Mark II RS2000 tooling. One in black and one in signal green. And finally for Fords, we have two new releases from two of our new tools, with a Ford Mustang GT Fastback in Orange Fury and an unusual Ford Transit custom leader operated by North Yorkshire Police as a forensic support vehicle. On to the not Ford releases. Firstly, we have a new release from our Jaguar XJ6 Series 2 tooling with a dark blue vehicle with a storied past. Our Vanguard's researcher would tell you that this one is one of the more challenging stories that he has ever chased down, but this model replicates a car that was owned by the Sheriff of Yorkshire and used in his official duties, often transporting members of the royal family during events. And lastly for new Vanguard's announcements, a model that has been a long time coming, perhaps the longest gap between an original announcement and the release of the model. A Rover 75 in Ski Blue was originally planned for the range back in 2007, but never materialised, so I'm very pleased to say that we've dusted off the tooling and this very long-awaited model will join the range 17 years after it was first announced. Now, since I announced it last year, our new tool of Jerry Anderson's beloved Stingray has been the single most inquired about release that I can think of in recent memory. So, I'm very pleased to say that the day is finally here and Stingray is now not only available to order, but it's actually in stock and available to ship right now. 
This new tool model was inspired by the classic Dinky toys of years ago and so features firing Sting missiles for the very first time in diecast. The addition of those retro toy features means the design is not entirely accurate to the version seen on TV, but the intent is very much to produce the toy that was never produced in the 1960s, all in time to celebrate Stingray's 60th anniversary this year. Moving on to Wallace and Gromit, we have a brand new tool item that I've never revealed until now. Inspired by the legendary train set chase sequence that closes the wrong trousers, this release allows you to recreate a moment from that famous scene. We're releasing this as three individual models allowing you to build the scene at home. Feathers McGraw comes with a locomotive, Gromit with a set of three coaches and Wallace is hanging in there on the back. This is our engineering sample of the complete set of models so you can see just how large a centrepiece this can be for fans and collectors. And yes, each model comes with a piece of track to connect together to aid display. There'll be more to come on this one soon. Time for some new James Bond releases. Firstly, we have another new tool model or two announced for pre-order, with the Q Glider, as seen in No Time to Die. Inspired by some of our classic James Bond toys, this release features snap open wings so that you can configure it in flight mode or fold it back up into submarine mode. With the wings open, this model has a 42 cm wingspan, making it only slightly smaller than our 172nd scale Avro Lancaster in the Aviation Archive range. And in this mode, it is by far the largest James Bond model that we've made as well. When it's all folded up though, it fits nicely into our standard James Bond collection packaging. Talking of large James Bond models, we've been thrilled with the response to our 112 scale Triumph Scrambler 1200XE from No Time To Die. That model has now sold out from our warehouse, so I'm very pleased to update the collection with a new version from the tooling. This new release replicates an example of the ultra-rare Bond Edition Triumph Scrambler that Triumph Motorcycles produced to celebrate the collaboration with the Bond franchise. This model features substantially different parts from the film version in a street specification, including new tyres, wing mirrors, handlebars, lights and a new exhaust, and, for the purposes of display, it has a working kickstand. Only 120 examples of the Bond edition were ever produced, and our 112 scale version replicates, of course, number 007, which today forms part of the collection and the Triumph Factory visitor experience. And lastly, for new announcements, we have a brand new release of the most famous Corgi toy of them all to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Goldfinger. A tiny history lesson though, as I need to press home the special nature of this one. The 261 Aston Martin DB5 is the single most famous die-cast toy car of them all, as well as the best-selling since it was first released in 1965. It was produced in gold to both tie into Goldfinger, but also for practical marketing purposes. The thinking by Corgi was that if the model was released in the movie-accurate Silver Birch, then people might think it was bare metal, and so the legendary gold toy was born. It sold millions, and in 1968 a new tool DB5 toy was produced, the 270. This model was in the accurate silver paint job, as well as featuring a more accurate body shape and more gadgets, such as rotating number plates and tyre slashers. Now, we've recently produced a new tool version of the original 261 DB5 for the Corgi Model Club, and with that came my realisation that there was a chance to do something unique and special with that classic toy that Bond fans and collectors have never had before. So, I'm very excited to debut the 261S. The original toy produced in the correct silver birch paint for the very first time. Featuring all the original action features including the working ejector seat, pre-orders on this one are now open. That's it for the January to April range announcements and so we come to probably the most anticipated part of the New Year video. What new tooling are Corgi working on this year I hear you ask? Well, just like I've dropped a surprise new tool for Wallace and Gromit this time around out of the blue, when we've been working on it for over a year, I'll be holding on to some for surprises later on in 2024. But before you panic, here's what collectors can expect to see updates on throughout 2024. Firstly, we've got another new Aviation Archive tooling underway, and I hope it will make quite a few people happy if they saw Airfix's surprise announcement in November last year. Yes, we are making a Messerschmitt ME410 to join our 172nd scale Second World War collection. This one is already nicely advanced in development as Airfix's release wasn't a surprise to us and will be more to come on this one very soon. For Vanguards, we have two new models in development. Just like the Ford Capri Mark II has been a huge hole in the collection, it has left me a bit befuddled that Vanguards has only ever had a Ford Fiesta Mark I in the range. And so, we're underway on a new tool version of the Ford Fiesta Mark II. We visited the relocated Ford Heritage Collection at Daventry to LiDAR scan an XR2 and a 1.1 Poplar Plus, 
which we did alongside the final Ford Fiesta to ever be built that entered the Heritage Collection only a few weeks before we arrived. And we're also working on a new tool vanguard that isn't a Ford as well, the Range Rover Classic. We visited the British Motor Museum at Gaydon to LiDAR scan the very first Range Rover off the production line and are also working closely with the Dunsfold collection to make the tooling as accurate as possible. I'm really looking forward to this one as the Range Rover Classic is another one of those holes in the Vanguard's range as well as a critical part of British motoring heritage that continues to stand the test of time. This one is being tooled to feature both the early two-door version and the later four-door version of the vehicle and with that numerous other options to ensure we can produce models from this tooling for years to come including luxury spec and famous rally examples. And lastly for new development projects at the moment I have one for Star Trek fans. I've been asked for more news on this new range quite a bit since I announced the first models last September. So to complement our incoming models of the USS Enterprise NCC-1701 and the USS Enterprise NCC-1701D, we're making a brand new tool diecast model of probably the most beloved Enterprise, the movie refit version of the Constitution 2 class NCC-1701. We've been working very hard to make sure this is the most accurate diecast version of this ship that we can and I'm looking forward to this being the first of several new starships that form part of our Corgi Star Trek range. We also have some more projects underway in development as well, but for now I'll keep those close to my chest to change things up a bit for this year. Look out for some surprises to come throughout 2024. That's it for our January announcements. Make sure to keep an eye on the Diecast Diaries blog on corgi.co.uk for development updates on everything I've revealed here and our social media channels for sneak peeks. I'll be back at the end of April with our next range of announcements for May to August. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then.